Mr. Greenwood? Here. Mr. Hodges? Here. Mr. Garber? Here. Ms. Mikulski? Here. Chairman Morin? Here. We have a letter of agenda this evening. Are there any questions or comments? We have adoption of the amended agenda. Second. Copy the motion and seconded. Ms. Rich? Mr. Hodges? Aye. Mr. Garber? Aye. Mr. Muskowski? Aye. Mr. Greenwood? Aye. Chairman Morin? Aye. We'll get straight into the budget work sessions. First up tonight, we have the Commissioner uh, Resident, Ms. Funkhauser, providing us an update on the Jamie Power forecast. Good evening, Chairman and members of the board. I'm sorry, I created that bullet point and then I had to change it and I needed a new one to Chris to put on the board while I'm talking. So all I can have is the one that is in front of you. I apologize. All right. Um, the same factors which cause values of these vehicles to increase from 2020 to 2021 persist. The shortages of computer chips continue to impact the inventory of new cars. There are 2 million fewer new vehicles on Yale lots than in 2020. The reduced supply results in higher prices for new vehicles. In 2022, the average price of a new vehicle increased to $49,000. Individuals considering purchasing a new vehicle find they are unable to obtain a new car or they can no longer afford a new car. Therefore, they keep their vehicle reducing the supply of used vehicles, causing used vehicle prices to increase. These market conditions will last through 2024. From 2020 to 2021, the value of used vehicles increased by 14%. From 2020 to 2021, in Kingway, the average value of all motorcycles, cars, trucks, and days increased by $797 to $8,051, an 11% increase. 808 vehicles were added to the tax rolls in 2021. In 2021, the tax assessment cars, trucks, vans, and motorcycles increased 15% by $713,380. From 2021 to 2022, J.D. Power predicts values of used vehicles increased 39%. J.D. Power reported that 95% of vehicles will see an increase in assessed value. Nationwide in 2020, the average value of a used car was $23,000. In November 2021, the average price of a used car in the United States increased to $29,000. This is, this is significantly greater than the King William average. Cars experienced a greater increase in values ranging from 40 to 57%, and truck values increased 20 to 33% on average. There are 3,913 more trucks than cars in the county. With this data, administration can create a new revenue projection model reflecting normal personal property revenue growth and factoring in how the reduced new car inventory affects the number of new cars moving into the county, how the lower than national average of used use vehicle values in King Lane affects the overall percentage of increases in personal property assessment. And how the significantly greater number of trucks compared to car affects the overall increases in assessment values. The $1.2 million King William receives from the state for PPTRA will remain the same. In 2022, the PPTRA will decrease um, from the 27.7%. An conservative estimate, and one assumes a 20% increase in assessed values and a 22%. PPTRA, an individual with a $15,000 car, will see the value increase to $18,000. At the same tax rate of $3.65 per hundred, the individual's personal property taxes will increase from $395 to $512, an increase of $116. Imagine the hardship caused to a family with two cars. I urge the board to provide personal property tax relief to King William citizens. That my office heard from so many citizens who received significantly higher personal property bills last November, causing them severe hardship. Administration has recommended decreasing real estate tax rate by one and a half cents, but the real estate values have now increased from 2021 to 2022. This one and a half cent decrease will save the average homeowner with a $204,000 property 
$30. This decrease would not even affect the escrow portion of the mortgage. Lowering the personal property tax rate would directly address the increase in personal property tax bills. I'm sure the county administrator has informed me the full has informed the board that the General Assembly passed emergency legislation allowing localities to create a new class of property for vehicles. This change can occur in 2022. Previously, state code prohibited vehicles from receiving a lower personal property rate than business personal property. By reducing the rate on only passenger vehicles, the impact on over personal property revenue is reduced. This action directly addressed the increase in personal property values and personal property bills. Many localities are reducing the JD Power assessed value by a predetermined percentage. JD Power will assess the vehicles as usual. Then the percentage increase of increased values will be calculated. For example, if the increase in assessed values is 22%, the board can adopt a resolution to bring a 20% discount. The treasurer would apply the discount before the bills are printed and mailed. The advantage with this method is that the discounts can reflect normal personal property growth and allow the county to attain its revenue projections. Hampton, Virginia Beach, and Chesapeake have already voted to apply a 25% discount on their assessed values. I suggested to administration to eliminate the license fee formula. This will save every vehicle owner $30. King William bills personal property for the current year, but the license fee is for the next year. By suspending the license fee for one year, the two cycles will be in sync. This option would greatly simplify the process in the way King William County changes to personal property probation. How many, you said Hampton, Virginia Beach, and what other is this three locales? Chesapeake. They already voted to um, apply a 25% discount. It's been reported in the newspaper. Amelia or Augusta Lynchburg um, are also applying the discount, but the rate hasn't been determined. So if you wait to adopt a discount, we can calculate all the bills and the assessment and see where we stand, and then you could adopt a percentage discount. I mean, when people experience $200 and $300 increases in their personal property tax bills after the same increase as the previous year, that is so much money, and that is to be paid at one time. Okay. Uh, before I ask anyone else, uh, else a chance to the money from this goes to the school, is that correct? Personal property. However, if we did a reduction, they would get whatever that reduction is, correct? Say that again. If we did a reduction in percentage, they would get wherever that is, and we wouldn't like owe the school back. It's a split lot, right? Yeah. The, the personal property, if there was a reduction, it could come off of either one or you could. This will end us. Well, if we did a discount, it would come off of both. Yeah. What we would almost have to do is it was a discount on the assessed value as opposed to a discount on the bill. I would think for simplicity's sake, with, yeah. with, the, with the split levy being involved. If we set the tax rate to, let's say, a 2020 level, yeah. do we know with the increased value and the uh, 800 and some additional vehicles, what that tax rate might be in order to achieve the 2020 See, revenue. You know, administration is going to have to look at some economic models. You know, there's 1 million, you know, there's 2 million fewer vehicles produced for, in 2021. Is that going to affect the, you know, that 808 vehicles? Is it going to go more? It will be less or it will be more? And people not holding on to their you know, same car and there's not the movement or there's not the increase in vehicles because they just can't afford the third vehicle? You have completely ignored my question. Oh, I'm sorry. What? I have to repeat? Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, in order to obtain or achieve the 2020 revenue, yeah. With the increased value of the vehicle mm -hmm. and the additional 818 
whatever that was, additional vehicles. Eight hundred eight. Have we factored in what the tax rate would be in order to achieve the twenty twenty, or even the twenty twenty one? Does anybody understand? Well, I think more. I think I think what we're trying to say is how can we. Um, capture the growth in the number of vehicles yeah. and what, yeah. what revenue they're bringing while yeah. also recognizing and trying to account for the uh, precipitous rise in value of the cars yeah. generally. I mean, I'm sure the finance director, you know, has a, a model that shows personal car tax revenue increases by a certain percentage each month or each year. So values increase by a certain amount. Well, and I think I think it might be an impossible task to 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 capture all of one and and then yeah. capture yeah. all of another. But I think if you just if you try to yeah. find the average, yeah. you get as close yeah. as you yeah. could. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. but if you just kind of by the average, yeah. then you'd still be bringing in the growth of the car. It, it's yeah. never it's yeah. never going to be a fair yeah. across the board for everybody. Well, right. I don't think yeah. the yeah. largest capture the that largest much. number of people that have the two three vehicles are brand new. Vehicles in their garage, they're going to get a tremendous. Well, right, right. But I think if we, really, if we identified the average as best we could, and we decided that we wanted to, um, you know, reduce the amount on which, and we, we've covered this, that yeah. we have the ability to reduce the percentage of assessed value on which we have. Yeah, that's what right. Hampton and the Virginia right. are doing. They're going to take a decrease in the assessed value. And then that would. I think accomplish what the goal would be, which is yeah. don't want to say, well, we've had this big growth in revenue, which, and then we want to discount this amount of growth in revenue. You want to say that we can we can demonstrate that we've seen this increase in the average assessed value of a car. Yes, our best guess on setting the rates are based on the needs of the county, not just get everything we can. That's, yeah. and that's so well, right. And I think here it's it's almost it's, it's a different exercise that we're doing on this because um, we do certainly want to. Capture that revenue growth that's, that's exits because the cars are coming in because of the natural growth of residents is coming in, saying that we're seeing on the real estate side. Um, but what we don't want to do, or what we want to minimize, is a precipitous rise in the tax bill for a car that has been garaged in the county for several years that would otherwise be seeing a decrease in value, seeing that value rise and seeing that tax bill go up in a big, in a big way, especially since again, we're, we're thinking that this is probably transient. And so doing it that way, discounting the assessment of value is, I think, going to be um, the smarter way to go as opposed to trying to lower the rate and capture that same thing. We can also increase the, the amount of uh, tax relief. We know what we're getting from the state. Right. We know we, we know that we can't do we're statutorily bound not to do that, right? Yeah. We, we can't I mean, we can't toss yeah. extra money towards that. Why can't we get rid of the registration fee? Like she said, that way every person will get a right. discount instead of just the van mandatory ones that have six new yeah. cars yeah. instead of the family that has no new cars isn't going to get any yeah. percentage that way it will affect everybody. No. Well, yeah. Except cars, cars, cars yeah. don't pay that. So, um, if you get the thirty, well, this is this is this is one of the reasons why I was like, this is a tough one. This yeah. guy because it's a weird kind of yeah. reductive tax. So, why don't we just reduce the real estate tax more to cover this increase? And then we won't have to do anything to this. The only thing that we may be just doing this for one year. Right. Yeah. That's so why we can resist the do that, administration. Be I don't want to go back and have to pay the real estate rate. Right. Yeah, that's right. Right. So yes, point, point, those points. Well, taken. you don't want to you don't want to squeeze the real estate rate to try to make it for this, especially if this goes away. Oh, right. next year because then you're gonna have to raise the real estate rate, which none of us. Uh, I think it would make sense to direct the tax reduction to the taxes that are increasing by so much. You know, I mean, real estate this isn't increasing; well, that guy stay the same, and then you have to think. You know, you'll have by your equalization rate right, after doing the assessment. Um, well, it'll be interesting to see what, what type of adjustments we have to make if this becomes more of a of a plateau yeah. than, a, than a peak. But then, like but, J.D. Power says through 2024, I mean, that these values will remain high through 2024. I don't know what the increase in values will be for 2022 to 2023, but the high values that are assessed now will remain. Right, and so at that point in time, maybe we expect to start seeing a more normal trend of depreciation of cars. But yeah. we see the value of these cars okay. drop twenty percent a year. Okay. Unlikely, mean, unless we have some type of recessionary pressure going yeah. on. In the I mean, there's so many unknowns right now. If we wait to adopt 
a percentage decrease in, in um, the assessment value. You can do it after you run the books and you can know exactly what you do. If you lower the tax rate and, you know, that's, you know, um, you know, hard to gauge, I guess. Right. And I think that that's probably the, the smartest move is, is to, again, see what these yeah. assessed values are coming yeah. in at, see what the revenue yeah. projections look like after that, and then we can determine what we think yeah. is appropriate. Uh, we're, 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 so, is this is this going to create a problem for we the you or the treasurer? I mean, we have to make sure you know you have to make sure that our software program can apply to this count. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to run the JD process values as I normally do, and then I could run the numbers and see the total assessed values of cars. Trucks and names. See, but if you do, if you don't, I don't know. You'll have to check, you know, read the legislation. I'm sure Mr. Um, Ashcraft can answer this. If you don't break that special class, you could keep the rates the same, but keep that special class and just apply the discount on the special class. And so the other thing that you pointed out is we could apply this to residential as opposed to. Yeah, you know, as opposed to business personal property. Right. And before business person people couldn't be assessed less than business personal property, and now they can. So, is this I, a one time legislation or is this a written? I think it's for our legislation, but it was, you know, introduced because of this sort of situation that we're in right now in the market. So, then the next question is how do we handle our revenue? Well, can I, can I ask you for? I know we discussed this last time, and I cannot remember what the answer is for the life of me right now, but when we were building the projections for, for the revenue from this tax this year, were we factoring in this type of growth? Or were, I, I thought I remember you saying you're being conservative and not factoring that in. So we have essentially some, if we see that there's going to be massive growth, we're not essentially re reducing our project our revenue projections if we did, reduce the budget. factor in the additional vehicles, perhaps. Uh, our projections are based on 2021's assessed values. Yeah. So you have increased. Yeah. So your revenue projection for personal property is now increased from 2021 to this purpose. Increase of revenue, but only based on new cars coming in. Yeah, it should be based on the additional 800, 800 on the new car. I should add okay. additional revenue. Or, or whatever, whatever growth escalator we normally use, I'll say we use it somewhere else. Well, we can do this a year at a time and not project it out to 24 because we, at JD right. Powers, is doing a, you're going to have to, I guess, you know, uh, I'm not even sure how close they're going to be on this 20 some percent. You know? Can we adjust on a six month or four? I would say that would be unlikely and probably. Well, that, that would be a problem. Because the market could completely turn around in six months. The next if you were building, if you were building so more than once, maybe. Yeah. You know, I mean, the value for 2021 is already determined. I mean, I don't know if they are, but it's a January 1st, 2022. The values are known. Not to me, not for King William, but they are known. JDR knows them. Once I am able to do that in the DMV download, I can send them the file and then I will know. I mean, I have to get that done. It's in the middle of May, I think, because we have to get it to the town so much earlier. Because they go. Well, that was the point of my question to Natasha is that we can work with our revenue projections as they are now and wait to see what these 2021 values come in at to determine what we could live with. Because yeah. I mean, we we projected conservatively. We did not project 10 or 20 percent yeah. growth in the time. What I'm getting yeah. at, if we decided on 18, 19 percent uh, reduction, we wouldn't want to decide that until, that. yeah, I was going to say we would have to decide that. After I the numbers, we could decide yeah. on the discount. I mean, it was just so heartbreaking because people coming into my office, you know, like in tears, where am I going to get an extra $150? You know? And there's quite a few people that, you know, this really, really hurts. Is this the only items that, that it's affecting motorcycles, cars, trucks? And, and J.D. Power assesses values for passenger vehicles. And motorcycles are included, not boats, not motorhomes, 
not Mac trucks, not tow trucks. You know, those would stay in the big, you know, like tow trucks would stay in that, you know, class. Your know, motorhomes would stay in the other personal property tax class. You could have separate class for those. You have a separate class. You know, there's a separate class for business property, and there could be a tow truck or, you know, those huge trucks that people use. We have quite a few Mac trucks. That's surprising to say. You know, vehicles over 10,000 pounds or tons. And it, it just, it hurts so many people. And now they're having two years in a row without getting them any. It, it's just, it's heartbreaking. I think it's safe to say that we can reduce something. We just don't know. Yeah. 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 Much at this and the Commissioner of Revenue Association sent out a survey about what different localities are doing to address the increased personal property tax assessed values. And by far, not everybody was fine with it. Like, there's quite as many people applying a discount as reducing the rates. Of course, this was the survey was done before the legislation, emergency legislation was passed. Other than me, there's only two other Prince George and Carolyn also suggesting um, suspending the real estate um, or the vehicle license fee. Yeah, and if there is going to be extra revenue from personal property, now would be the year, the year to you know um, suspend it for a year. I mean, I've had board members, two board members, ask me about priority personal property. That's this is a big, big thing. So. It would set us on the court to be ready for that when the board decides to do that. Mr. Chair, Mr. Ashford, uh, can you tell us that or tell me that the $30 of the tax goes to the school? Right? Yeah, Mr. Hudson. We'd have to come up with something to cover that. That's about I think it's better to go with some kind of percentage decrease per year as we move along with this. That comes up goes to the schools too. Everything goes to the school. No. Personal property split. This is split up. Yeah. So we would the real registration fees not. Yeah. So uh, correct. The yeah. registration fee is applied 100 percent of the schools. Okay. Okay. I, I thought it's yeah. personal property yeah. tax split. Yeah. So yeah. Just kind of personal property tax. Yeah. 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 It's just I thought it's both sides of the house. You hear that, Steve? That one hundred thousand. How much? Four hundred thousand. Yeah. 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 It was four hundred ninety-one thousand. Okay. But I said it was four hundred ninety-one thousand dollars yeah. assessed for the license fees, but yeah, one hundred percent was as well. Yeah, oh. but I mean a lot were they, you know, because you know, you know, they get rid of the college. All right, so when do we license fees? Yeah. We have an idea of when we will know the, these values, so uh, we can sort of plan in which of our meetings that we can act. But well, as soon as I mean, can um, fix that D and D down annual download problem. Yeah, you know, I can. I thought all that was fixed already. Well, the one thing they got is going to happen in April, but that D and annual download has an error, and so development is working on that. So I don't know when that will be. But that things like the DMV download always is it's probably moving in and out every month. But the end of the year captures all the ones that for whatever reason are missed. You know, so we really do need it to assess personal property. Mr. Ashford, if we could ask you to run a few models, I think the trainers don't want we know what some what if scenarios to get started yeah. developing those. I mean, and then that second page with um, I'll bring it back next week. With this, you know, he had the number of cars versus trucks. Yeah, and then it, it's a little bit hard because you have the different rates of fuel and you know, what's point. But okay. right. thank you very much. We'll bring it back next week, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we may now have all the all the data because oh, no, I, I don't but, expect, but just to but I think we could apply some of the more popular uh, yeah. ways that other localities are dealing with this and just give you something to look at. Now, the, the effects on school contributions and all that. Right. I'm just trying to get an idea. See, none of these other localities have that issue. Right. <laughs> that, you know, uh, right. So that's what I
I put together kind of some navigator. Yeah, we'll get the stuff for next week. Okay, that's it. Uh, thank you all. Yeah, I'm just going to live here for a little bit. <laughs> we, we, we missed um, one of the agenda items uh, regarding the commissioner's salary request um, up front so that she can leave, not have to stick around for all of this other stuff. So, included in the agenda package is information regarding the salary request from the Commissioner of Revenue and the County Administrator's recommended salaries. In February 2020, the county conducted a classification and compensation review project. The goal of the review was to perform a comprehensive review of components that affect the county's compensation program, such as review of the compensation structure, determine the regional market for other locality salaries, assess the internal equity of salaries paid to comparable county positions. Department heads were involved throughout the project. They reviewed and commented on job descriptions and pay class grade. Specific positions were updated to allow for upward mobility within the departments by classifying positions at different grade levels, for example, Deputy 1, Deputy 2, Deputy 3, and Deputy 4. In FY23 budget proposal, uh, proposals information under section seven supporting documents, you will find a listing of position, positions listed by department, then grade, showing title, and range. And that, uh, like I said, is in your binder in section seven. It should be that very first page that you see under supporting documents. And that kind of gives you an idea of where right now those positions in the commissioner's office are, are, are in. The, uh, compared to the different um, positions that Ms. Funkhauser was comparing them to previously, too. So, I'm not sure I've got the right page. Section so so seven is mine, it's the second page in section seven. Yeah. There you go. I imagine the deputy, chief deputy, and deputy one or one and no. Okay, I'll see it. I'll see it. I'll see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we have the actual ask? I, I'm yes, sure it's, it's in the memo. Um, I, I, so, which or do you want to talk about a specific position or? The request. The request is in. Oh, they should. It is in the memo. Okay. You're talking about the request on the memorandum. So we do not we do not have a do we have a deputy deputy commissioner three? We just have a one and two, right? I don't even think we have a one. Is June a two? Two and three. I think I think we have two deputy twos and then we have a chief deputy. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, both the same. Yeah. 
Then we confirmed that the the uh, staff and the commissioner of revenue's office will enjoy the coma. Yes. And any merit raises due or determined. That has been factored into the. So what's the additional ask? So. So that's factored into the uh, rec recommendation. The county administrator's yeah. recommendation okay. is for COLA and yes, only. COLA and yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there an additional ask? Yes, it would be. Yeah. Uh, county administrator recommends for the chief deputy 44309. The ask has been 54,000. And I can go through each of the other two also. What are, what are the years of service for these positions? I know it's four that the chief deputy has. Um, yeah. She has over 25. And in FY 2021, we gave, that was the year when um, COVID. And we didn't even um, give Mary and Cola that year to other employees, but she was one of the people that we did the comp plan, brought her up 2107. We gave her an increase that year in the FY 2021. And put her um, at that time, the Commissioner of Revenue thought that's where she needed to be with the new pay classification okay. study. I believe um, Ms. Hayden hadn't even been here a year when we did this, and June is brand new. So she has basically two years service now, two and a half. Suzanne? Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Um, no, no comments. I mean, you know, we just did a pay study. It's, it's, it's difficult to just have big changes and we just did a pay study. And we are expecting to go ahead and budget for FY24. Um, to go ahead and do a do it classification study again with an outside source this time. Okay, I'll take it in consideration. Let me see if I can stick to the agenda here. <laughs> Alrighty. So we'll talk about the revenues for projection for FY23. Included in the packet is a summary of projected FY23 general fund revenues. Real estate tax rate proposed includes a penny and a half tax deduction. All other property tax rates remain level for FY22. After hearing from the commissioner regarding possible personal property revenue increase for FY23, we ask that the board give us feedback on if the board feels these anticipated increases should be included in projections for FY23. I think we made that decision, right? <laughs> but are there any other questions about the revenue? Um, there was a chart left in the, included in the packet that kind of gives you a rough idea of you know, the increases that we're seeing for real estate with the projections. Again, the projections are based on 2021 assessed values with no increase. We just not knowing what to come with, you know, purchases of vehicles and things like that. We just left it as what we would what we saw. Do we know where we're at on collections for personal property at this point? Percentage wise? I do not, but I could always ask the, um, the treasurer to see if she could send us some kind of report. So, you know, I mean, if they're really struggling, are they able to even pay it? Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can bring that in for next week. Just based on yeah. previous years and your experience, but where should we be by now? Okay. On average, what gut feel do we have? I, I will put off contact that for you. What's your level of confidence, let's say, is extremely high, 99% that this is nothing's going to jump up? <laughs> you know, we're conservative in our budgeting. Um, I've been holding my breath every meeting. Yeah. Yeah. No. How is it going to happen? I don't think anybody knows that. <laughs> when you said that, I, I think he was getting ready to say yes until you said jump up. <laughs> That's good to be confident in the budget. We thought long and hard about, uh, about the decrease. And, uh, Obviously, based on expenditures, the board has options to generate more revenue as far as that's concerned. I would hope you know, you take a long look at that, but at the same time, that's, uh, that's all your options. Okay. 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 Any other comments, questions? Before we move on? Are we are we going to discuss the fuel costs? Yep, that's next on the list. Oh, okay, I was thinking. Okay, I thought. Yeah, I was able to pull data from the U.S. Energy Information Administration for further insight of the fuel cost increase of late. The price of regular gasoline and diesel have increased from February 7th to March 14th by 32.9 percent for diesel and 25.5 percent for gasoline. Based on department's usage to date this fiscal year and estimating the remaining amount through this fiscal year, the fuel price increase could potentially raise the projected expenses for fuel in FY23 by 53573 For everybody. So, yes, so and that's, what included was a chart that kind of gave you uh, the numbers of that's the just the rest. That's just the rest of this year. That would be for no. That's for FY23. The fifty-three thousand is what I would need to increase if we if we wanted if it to go. It stays the way that it is when it gets worse. We're gonna gamble that yeah, if we leave it the way it is. When was the last time you took your numbers up? Because it's come down. Diesel's come down. Uh, I did it as of February, uh, March fourteenth. So, and like you said, the prices are already coming down, and that little bit of a time. So that's what I'm coming to you for is your recommendations on would you want me to increase fuel expenses for FY23 or just in my opinion, yes. Okay. I think you have to. Uh I think because just figuring it, I mean, I know I looked at your sheriff's only because I don't I don't know which fire department used in gallons, but with a somewhat reduced force, he was he used like 25,000 gallons. Uh that came out with a new prices to be go, and he was paying fifty some thousand a year. It would go over a hundred or around a hundred. Right. Yeah. So in that respect, and then you still don't have the fire department. Right? No. Mm -hmm. And in, in those figures that I'm talking about, right. I think you need to try to find it somewhere. Yeah. So he. Um... And is he, is it gonna at some point be put in their budget so they know what they're dealing with? Yes, yes, if we do, you know what I mean. Like versus that being over here a line item, no. Okay. So, so Bill, you're saying that uh, it's felt well, look at, look at the cost. I mean, so we're looking, yeah, we're only looking at you know, 25 percent for gas, 32.9 for diesel. So, you're saying that their cost is double and it's almost a hundred thousand. That's what we figured on what the, what the going rate was at well, that point. That twenty five percent has dropped a little bit. bit. Well, that's so uh, this the fifty three thousand overall. Uh, well, right, so could the, be right. The, the twenty five percent increase is based on February and March. So certainly year over year. Okay, so we're not. This is just month for month, or are we looking at year over year? So a twenty five percent increase for the year, or thirty two point nine for days. Still wouldn't equate to to what he's saying. That, you know, the cost stays the same way. So the time he, frame that I pulled was with the twenty five percent is kind of where it was peaking at the highs too. I feel like. 
So you included the class. You included the, the sheriff's oh. the sheriff's department, fire, and EM. Yeah. So the sheriff had just the sheriff's office. This is not animal control. Just the sheriff's office. Um, we had recommended fifty-five thousand for fuel for him, and with this um exercise, we we would recommend eighty-seven eight hundred ten for him alone. And how many gallons were you figuring at that time? Um, I didn't figure it by gal. Ooh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, I did. No, I did not. I figured it by whatever the percentage for the regular fuel, the 25 and a half. I just added that to what I see where they're going to be at the end of this year. And I just times it by that. I increased it by 25.5. So if I may break up, Sheriff Walton, if you've heard the term tactics, techniques, procedures, it's, a, it's how you run your fleet. Is there anything, any efficiencies that that can be gained by changing policy or changing procedures without affecting their operations. That's just a off the wall. Off the wall right now to say no. We have unfilled positions now, but once we get those positions filled, that's, that's more vehicles on the road. You know, that's what we're anticipating an increase. Yeah. Okay. And historically, Parking, if that's the, the angle you're going at, parking has never really worked. Uh, then the folks get upset. Uh, usually crime rates increase if they know that you're not patrolling. Now, I don't know what percentage, but they generally do go up some. How about for the, uh, the rest of the county fleet? Are there efficiencies that we can? Impose, I hate to get to that point, but uh, if we get to uh, the checkbook starts running low, can we impose certain restrictions? Doubling up on trips, uh, limiting trips, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That, that's draconian, but not making two or three trips a day to a certain destination around the county, try to, try to meet every time you want a trip. Yeah, there's, there's things. Can you also recommend that really look at the fact of sending an ambulance and fire truck to most of these calls? Uh, I know that does happen a lot and uh, it does get expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, I I'd like to see a, a two-pronged approach of us. We probably we need to identify some more evidence we can put towards this. We also need to identify. Opportunities to say what we can, at least until this all sorts itself out. Because, as Natasha said, this could be over in a month, it could go right back up, last all year. We really don't know. So, what is, what is our what is our date that we have to make this decision? That you have to make this decision, is it? It's not 30 June. Yeah, <laughs> So, that could be great. so I, I think what, what I'm seeing here, what, what, what I'm thinking here, we're looking at this 53573 number. And there's concern that that might, number might not be sufficient to capture all of the potential costs. But I say if we say we want to identify, you know, $55,000 in revenue that we can put towards this and then make up the rest, again, if, if we just kind of operate with that until we can. And uh, on the other end, hope that um, things break the other way. That they break hard the other way, um, then yeah, we're gonna have to really, I think, strap down some stuff. Grass might have to be a little bit taller than like. And if it, it really wouldn't, we still could use the other side. It, we we can't. Hoping, and, um, hoping that right. it doesn't go long term and this is not an angle, is what I would hope. I'm using that. I'm trying to be optimistic about the situation. Well, I, I am too. It, well, the look, world effect on everything right now, I'm not so sure it's anything. Obviously, the ones that we need to keep on the road, the most, are the sheriff's office and fire department. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where we need to focus the resources on making sure they've got what they need to do to do their jobs. Um, How often do you get reports from? Is it monthly that staff turns in? On, yes. It, it is a monthly. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little more scrutiny on that. Yeah, we can definitely. Um, we use um, Mansfield. 
So if it, we run, we can run reports, generate all kinds of things from that vendor. Just keep a real close eye on expense costs. What's mileage reimbursed in that right now? 53 point nine. Is it that low? I thought it was higher than that. I thought it was in the 70s. It's, 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 it's what? 53. 53? That's not right. Is that what I mean? Has it gone? I think it did go up in last year, maybe. Okay. At one point, it, it, it had gone way up. But I, I, it had always been in the 50s for a long time. But anyways. Sure. When we're looking at, about. at fuel costs, how much of that is tax that you don't pay? When we're looking at a gallon of gas, do you know how much it, the tax rate is? Okay. No, no, no. Is there a is there a contract? Yes. It is. Is it have. is it at a certain rate? Yeah. Well, it, so it it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mr. Ashcraft to actually talk to me today about what he's possibly getting that out maybe to see if we can get better pricing too. They are giving you a contract this day because they don't even get prices. Well, no, I'm prices. wearing a contract with them, you know the little cards that we use. Oh, oh no, 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 I when you say contract. I think of a dollar and twenty-five gallon, you know, back in the day, and and it's fixed at that. Yeah, and yeah. actually, Patco got in trouble with that with us in the town because then the gas shot up. Yeah, no, we can't get that. <laughs> they, they're paying for that stuff and charging the customer almost daily. I think. Right, and but we are getting really good pricing. It's through the state contract, so. State federal gas taxes right now for this fiscal year is forty-seven point four cents per. Any other questions? Okay, other side. FY twenty one anticipated county unassigned fund balance is eight million forty three thousand seven hundred and forty three. 31% of FY21 expenditures is what that comes out to. The FY23 proposed budget requests using a total of 1,895,093 to fund the FY23 expense for reassessment contract and to fund various capital improvement items. And that total that we're, we're requesting in the proposed budget is 1,674,043. What did he say? 24% of what you want from down. If you spend every, if you spend every dollar, what, what page is that? Page two of this memo that she's been going up up here. Everything is following the memo. Yeah. This. Okay. So we went from 31 to 24. What was the auditor's findings that said when they came to the just years back? I thought they said it was supposed to be around 15, 16 percent. 20 percent. 20 percent. Yeah. That's a local adoption. Yeah, I think like we started, we didn't have any. Well, four, there's four or five is 12 or 15. That's right. Yeah, the was generally, you know, 12 to 15 percent is what um, that but we we had set that we wanted the minimum to be 20 percent cash flow. The reason we would set it that was because we identified that as being the level at which we had sufficient cash flow to cover the collection periods, right? Since we collect basically, you know, twice, two big collections annually. That's a big old sign there. Right, 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 right. So you need a fund there to be able to cover the actual cash expenditures that are coming in and out because your 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 expenditures go all year, but your collections come in June, December, and now part of January. So, and that number is going to be twenty four percent. Yes. Sir. And that's if you fund everything in the capital plan that's just proposed. But just the way timing would be, I don't, not, not every project will be funded 100%. Okay. Is that it's a comfortable cushion, but it's. 
I think Mr. Ashcraft's point is that even funding everything in the capital budget doesn't necessarily mean that all of that is going to be expended in the fiscal year. That's right. So that's it. Everything times out to where we spend every dollar that we appropriate to the capital plan in this fiscal year. Probably have a little bit more built in cushion than that. But even at 24 percent, that's that's expending off of what we expect it to be at the end of the fiscal year. It's not also accounting for any addition there may be to the fund at the end of the year. That fiscal year to come to that. So. Alex, my comment would be that we have some capital needs that we need to take care of. And obviously, one of the biggest chunks of this has been a big priority for, for us for a long time now, which is getting that internet project going. So, um, you know, again, there's sufficient cushion there just based on what we had and what we, what we expect will come out of, of the final financials. And again, we, we've got additional cushion in there. We're concerned about getting close to that 20% number in the fact that we're probably not going to be spending all every dollar of it this fiscal year. And then also, there's <coughs> You know, the likelihood is based on the historical growth of the fund that we'll see additional growth in the fund once we close out this kind of fiscal year. So it, it doesn't it doesn't really give me any concern that we're we're you know flying close to the sun or anything like that. I think it's and later in this evening I will talk to you more about the funding sources that we how what we would intend to use that assigned balance for within the capital improvement plan too for FY23. And of course, this is not much to do with the unassigned, but we've got to keep in mind that the ARPA funds run out. And this is the last budget year that we're going to have ARPA for those You'll six. You'll have them in 24 also. For the six firefighters? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the ending. No, no, I think we, we had mapped it out to basically where it acted like the safer right. All right. We did like basically three years, 100%. Like what we would have done if we had gotten the safer grant we did. So this is, we, we're two years in. Cares this was this is our first year. Cares was one year. Now, okay. Two All right, years. there you go. So, I mean, just two one years year. into a three year? We're, we're two years into what is ultimately a four year because we could use CARES for part of it. Yeah, if you go to se section back. seven, it'll give you the breakdown. You're right. In 20, so, we are using it in FY22 and FY23 for the fire and EMS seven people. But that's it. And then in 24, we still have a little tiny remaining, but nothing really to be talked about. I need to head down that road. That's two days worth. And then you got to keep in mind there's a request for what? Six more or seven more? Seven. Yeah, sure. if, like that, seven. if that goes. For the same part? Yeah. Seven. Seven more. Uh, we're we're requesting that. Let's get the safer. Yeah. No, because that's the thing too. The safer is only going to pay for new hires. It's not going to pay for the seven we just hired. Right. But the request was 13 overall, and we no, don't six. But these would be new hires, right? They would be yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And at some point, that's going to run out. We got a right to check it. So, right. yeah, and that's something that we will be discussing after you know this budget process right. is right. more information about that. Just what's the plan? You know, if, if we do get the safer grant, how do we, we 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 want to sit down and talk more about that? How historically, you know, well, not historically, but Five years from now, how are we going to pay for it if you hire another six to save for plus we have the seven with our plus? So that's going to be for discussion and discussion of how are we going to use the staff we have. We, we we want to look at you know the schedule, you know, how are how are we utilizing that number of people to cover the area? Included in the packet this evening is a summary of the outside organization's request for funding for FY23 budget. The majority of organizations requested level funding. My intent tonight is to highlight new requests and additional funding requests. The county has received several new funding requests from outside agencies that have not been funded in previous years. These agencies include Historic Society of West Point for $10,000. This report would assist the museum to continue its growth. Bridges of Change Domestic Violence has requested $5,000 from King William County 
Charles City, town of West Point, and New Kent. King and Queen request of 3,500. Thrive Virginia has requested 5,000, which re represents 0.2% of agency's operating budget. Additional local government funding includes 1,000 from the town of West Point and 20,000 from Charles City. Virginia Career Works has requested 4,287, which is based on King William County population of 17,148 times 0.25 per capita. Additional funding requests include Pamunkey Regional Library has requested a total of 593,168, which is an increase of 148,571. The increase is based on an increase for salary and benefits, books and materials, and other operational costs. Upper King William Senior Citizen Center in previous years received funds from King William County for 2000. Since the pandemic, the center has been not been open, but they anticipate reopening next year. The organization has requested the county to fund them for FY23, $2,000. Mount Peninsula Juvenile Detention Center, Merrimack Center, has requested 32,623, which is an increase of 5,956. The increase is based on King William County average of the service for the previous five years. Middle Peninsula Local Probation and Pretrial Service has requested 23,100, which is an increase of 3,900. The increase is based on FY21 actual placement and utilization of the program by King William County. Middle Peninsula Regional Security Center has requested 1,770,384, which is an increase of 35,415. The increase is based on FY21 inmate dates. Three Rivers Health District requests for 158,224. This is an 18,224 increase from FY22. The increase is due to the JLARC Medicaid rate change done by the General Assembly in spring 2021. Mango Fire and Rescue requests uh, um, 94,977, which is an increase of 2,029. They are not included on this chart that you guys are looking at. I'm sorry. I have a lot of times to consider them an outside agency. So that, I apologize. We will be talking about them later on too. <laughs> so let's just skip them. Medflight has requested 1,200, which is an increase of 900. This increase is based on total missions for King William County over the last four years. King William County had 15 missions out of the 2,769 regional. Peninsula Emergency Medical Services has requested 2,746, which is an increase of 519. The increase is based on King William County population growth. And BIPSA is the agency that provides regional solid waste management service to King William County. Overall, there was an increase of 489,380 or 14.3% regionally for Essex, King and Queen, King William County, Matthews and Middlesex County. The increase is due to salary adjustments to maintain staffing at current levels. The cost for FY23 is anticipated to increase by a total of 119,239 for King William County. And later on, I actually will be talking to you about it, um, some options they have provided to us if we wanted to increase um, um, hours. The final organization that I will mention tonight that has requested an increase is Bay Transit. Bay Transit has requested 28,298, which is an increase of 825. The 3% increase is due to rising costs of transportation. The request that I've talked about um, that, that the agency itself is not necessarily what the county administrator has recommended, um, but you, you'll see that in your uh, chart for the general fund, what he has recommended also. Okay, so right now, everything that we project covers all of these requests. Not the department of the agency requests. No, we are not funding. We will not be. Uh, the county administrator has recommended that we level fund for Monkey Regional Library. Um, that we 
do not fund any of the, the new requests except for Virginia Career Works. And that's that's it. That pretty much summarizes. Okay, so thrive, nothing. Correct. So med flights included the increase. Yeah, yeah med flight did include the increase. So no, part of my fire and EMS. And I apologize again. Like oh, I was trying to keep all the outside agencies in <laughs> one thing and. No, I just, I don't know, uh, at 32,000 a trip or 35,000 a trip, what's $900? That's what it costs you today. Yep. That can't be right. Especially Air Force One doesn't cost that much. I'm, I've actually heard uh, one of my yeah. friends, his wife was, was uh, one and then it was more than that. Show it to the insurance. Company. Right. I heard there was a famous story at Southwest where they do hard building and the guy it was like $110,000 because he got that for a heart attack. Yeah. It's a flexible a floating fee. It's gone up dr dramatically. Uh, uh, those that knew Jason Harlow when he had his first episode, it was five grand. It was 30 something. This, this needs to be something we need to jump on our legislators about. This is awesome. I'm very familiar with the cost of fixed ones, helicopters. Yeah. Well, you're sure, right now, the pretty good charge on that. They charge me for every, every, everything in a bed. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, sir. So there's a difference between med flight and life effect. Med flight is a state helicopter, life effect is not. I think that's where the charges are. The charges, okay. From the enterprise. <laughs> yeah. Well, the call is made. The first one that gets there is, picks it up. Well, it's available. <clears throat> well, they do fly a lot in this area. Um, the fire chief is requesting to okay. speak. Chief, can you hear us? Hang on a second. Oh. Lou, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. I apologize. Uh, when you call for a helicopter, it depends on who you call. Uh, their services and their billing is irrelevant to who comes. Uh, their mission is always going to be based around who uh, you call. So when you call them, they're going to respond regardless of how the billing turns out on the backside. So uh, MedFlight is um, established by the state and they generally don't charge and uh, Life Evac is one of the many who offer services in the region who do charge. However, uh, recently Life Evac has uh, created a program for offset billing. And if you guys would like a more detailed explanation of that, I'd be glad to get it to you. But people who we call a helicopter for, in general, just speaking, um, it doesn't matter what the cost is because when you call for a helicopter, their life is in jeopardy. So we gen we almost always default to who can get to that patient and get them to the center they need to go to the fastest to ensure that their life continues. And that decision is made by the on-scene senior individual, I assume. Sorry about that, I muted myself. Um, no, sir, uh, usually that is always managed by dispatch unless the on-scene commander makes a different decision. Uh, I know that often you will hear somebody ask for a specific helicopter, but in most situations, the request goes to dispatch, dispatch, dispatch is a helicopter who 
it was an outline for them to call. Um, and to, I'm not real sure where that lies right now um, between life evac and med, med flight. I believe that we're kind of in the middle with that because of the, the billing offset that life evac put in place this past year. We have loosened up the reins on always calling for med flight because sometimes med flight can be extended uh, flight times, uh, on scene times, which puts a patient in jeopardy. So, we, you know, it's kind of it kind of dwindles down to what's the right choice for the patient, and and that will roll back onto the on scene supervisor shoulders, like you said. But initially, it should be a list. Hey, Chief. When you're saying this, you're not talking about you're you're talking about dispatch that determines who to call, correct? That's all you're saying. They're not making a decision on whether to call a helicopter or not. Oh no, sir, no, sir. The on scene supervisor makes the call to call a helicopter. Yeah, I wonder how they would know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, the dispatcher shouldn't have the weight of asking for a helicopter on their own shoulders. Okay, that's what I thought. So basically, the dispatcher looks at and lets and picks out a picks out one and calls them. Is that the way that works, or was it related? Usually, that's the way it will work, unless the on-scene supervisor, whoever that might be, the incident commander says call med flight. If they say call med flight, the dispatcher is going to call med flight. They're, they're not there to take the responsibility of who to call if the incident commander is demanding something from the scene. Okay, no problem. I just, I don't want undue uh, responsibility being placed on the dispatchers there. They do everything they can to help us, but it, you know, Ultimately, it rolls down to the incident commander. Okay, we can move on to the next thing. So the new positions, the total cost for the new positions request for FY23 from the general fund is 154612 This amount is salary plus benefits. And you have the listing in your memo. Um, so that would be for the payroll specialist, records manager for the Commonwealth attorney, and two dispatchers for E911. Could I ask Jeff uh, a question about the dispatchers? Jeff, it looks like we have 11 dispatchers at this point in time. Is that correct? That is correct. And you're asking for two more? That is correct. What type of hours do these dispatchers work? They work for 12 hours, Jeff. Well, I was shifts. So you do physically have coverage right now. Oh, yes, sir. Sometimes it's tight, but we have no. Do you we pay do a lot you, of overtime right now to make sure that we have coverage? Yeah. If you had to make a choice between two more dispatches and, and equal pay for the sheriff's desk compared to fire and EMS, what would be your answer? Well, that's a hard question to ask if you're already getting decent pay. We haven't approved that budget. Yeah, we haven't approved it, but it's right. in the budget. I know that's, that's what yeah, I'm asking. Like he's saying oh, the right. roads haven't been approved yet. Yeah. Nothing's been approved yet. Yeah. A lot of cuts can still be made. They need to find the money somewhere. So, would one be sufficient? Yeah. I mean, I don't know that I can honestly answer answer the question. But basically, we're doing okay with the line. If they work in twelve hour shifts, we're, we're so so you work in you work in uh, twelve hour shifts. Uh, how many work per shift? Well, right now we have three. Um, let me make sure. Because right now we just we just shorthand right now. Um, so on a normal shift, we have three in the day with, with the two in the supervisor and three in the evening until midnight, and then there's two after midnight. That problem is running in when people need time off or, or they have to take off the holidays. 
or whatever. We don't have enough people to cover that, and we're, we're paying a lot of overtime for people to come back in and work. And that's that's why we're asking for that because the overtime is killing us. Well, where I came from, it was always cheaper to work people overtime than what it was to, to hire, even at premium pay, and then because of all the benefits involved. You wear your people out, and then uh, oh, I'm not all about that. I was looking at me. I'm yeah. going out. If you're doing 12 hours and then you want to work overtime, how how alert are they going to be? You've got a part of that. Well, they they want to rotate and schedule like like firing EMS. They work in three twelves and then with two two off two yes. days off. Okay. okay. <laughs> sure. But one more question deal with that. Are y'all getting tied up on, don't you have to stay on the phone to render the first aid? So yeah, with the EMD training that they have, yes, they, they must remain on the line with the caller and to help arrive on scene. And they're giving instructions, first aid, CPR, whatever, until that medic unit, fire unit, whatever arrives on scene. So they can't really hang up anybody. And, and not knowing what's going to happen with the Marcus bill, and I, I think they kind of pushed that out. And that was what, that was another factor that they put in there. The dispatcher would be tied up on a phone with a mental health crisis, trying to find, or, or, or while a mental health worker is trying to find bed space or to evaluate, and we have to remain on the line until that's decided. But thankfully, I think I, the last I've heard, that's been pushed out and there's nothing been decided on the market source from this coming year, but that's coming down the road. I don't know. And we may we may not have to do anything, uh, you know, if they go with that 40,000 population threshold, we might have to do anything different than what we're doing now. There's all kinds of factors in that when we ask for this, uh, but back to the, you know, we, we are really struggling to maintain people in that seat to answer the calls and dispatch the fire rescue. You know, it's more than just picking up the phone and saying, you know, what's your emergency? Then they've got a dispatch to call and then they've got all the radio traffic while other 911 calls are coming in for them. A traffic accident, for example. A traffic accident at 360 generates a lot of 911 calls while they're still trying to dispatch fire units or rescue units. They're still answering those 911 calls. But these two additional people are not going to allow you to, to man any more people in those 12 hour shifts. It? It, it will help us maintain a level that we have. In other words, you, you you're looking at maybe having more than three on each of those twelve hour shifts, or, or is that what you're? It would, it would be a goal to have three around the clock, yes. But more important, make sure that when those folks take off, you know, that we have we have enough coverage in that. What is your average uh, number of years in the department? You had some of the retirements. Is there are a lot of retirements in the last few years. So right now, I have a very uh, I wouldn't say young dispatch staff, but you know, I've got maybe a 10, 10 15 year. Um, some of them get quite a few new ones right now. We're in a hiring process now. So, still not there yet. Patricia is typically low, though, I believe. Yes, but dispatch it is. Yes. Are there any HR formulas that we can double check? That's a, that's a HR question. Don't want to put it on you. Just to check the formulas. You have a 12, you have a 24 hour operation with X amount of calls and careful and gave you some numbers. 813 fire EMS calls, 1943 police calls in 2021. So it's incrementally increasing every year. I'm sorry, 7,890 police calls. Sorry. 2021. So that's a that's a substantial increase. And I can only project that it's going to get worse as we grow. So the PIMSA um, proposed budget, does that include any more days? Um, 
If the board would like to consider additional ways available to citizens, FIFSA has given the county two options. Uh, option one is to reopen Eckwood site on Wednesday and reopen the landfill site on Sunday. This would be an increase of 21,000 to the budget request already submitted. Option two is Epworth, DFW, and landfill sites would open six days, all closed on Thursday. This option would be an additional expense of 50500 to the budget request. All right, what page are we on there? Back on the memo. Page in the memo. Okay. So they've already asked for how much of an increase over last year. I'm sure it's here. Hundred and twelve thousand for additional, just to operate normally right. because of wage increase and right. other expenses. That's why we didn't really put more days for higher costs. That's what this problem being closed three days. But not sure it's worth twenty one thousand dollars. Well, it wouldn't be. It's eleven dollars an hour, basically. So, if you wanted to reopen one site, um, you know, one of the day, ten hour operating day would be. So it's well, it's one hundred and twelve thousand dollar increase just to keep it as it is. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. If you agree with the network and not the landfill. Are we going to work on It was a big problem when we cut them, I'll tell you that, because the idea that was pitched to me was I know what we'll do. What was the landfill and VFW road an additional day a week? I told our fifth district representative at the time that was a good thing. I know it's an awful little question. Uh -huh. Half a day with the impact. The impact be the same. You have to bring in a person, open it up. I'd like to ask the question. The best I can do, again, it, it seems like it's pretty cut and dry math. It's 11 hours an hour. Now, the question is do they have somebody that's willing to work? You know, half a day, 11 hours. Would, an hour. Yeah, would they do it for yeah. me? Maybe open one half a day and go to the other and open half a day? I think it's great. I'm just more. Why are you uh, well, look, I'm, I'm saying let's let's do let's do whole measures or not at all here. In this case, I don't think that a half a day is done. There's enough people that don't know the schedule to stand. <laughs> it's hard to set a schedule. I actually went to up F well F worth today and they were closed. Well, every time I look for it, I can't find it. It is hard. I'm just asking, right? could you? Make that a little more easy to find this good for answer. A little easier. It is the schedule. It is difficult to find. I don't know why, but it just is. And certainly when we start working on a um, another site in the county, we need to fix all of this. Well, you're right. I, I think the biggest Thing that we need to fix right now in Southern Oh, yeah. That's that's our, our big, big problem. Um, I don't see Epworth really ever, um, but I imagine that it takes a lot of load because of Central Garage. You know, DFW Road is, is, is an honor of the week. Uh, I think it can be. It's, um, and that's, you know, again, that's taking extra load from landfill being closed next, which is, again, not necessarily a high volume site. One of the things that we could get up where it's upgraded, they, Mr. Maggot had promised more or less that we were going to get a tire. Uh, I've seen that. But I would say that for this year's purposes, with, with the already big increases we're seeing just on, on there and alone, I, I, don't, I, don't, see I don't see pursuing additional, additional, additional things. And again, as nice as additional days would be for some people, I think until we fix Central Garage, it's all half measures. So. Everyone else agree? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's what, three years now? 
It's been this way for years. No, oh, yeah. Longer than that. People were investing. How, uh, how have you experienced the, uh, the level of trash that before they pull them out? I, I think that work has gotten better. And we'll go there. For Only, the if you don't want to be there when they're uh, removing a dumpster and they're placing the next one. It will back up. We'll back up into the Epworth Road. It's a bad site. It's a blind, blind yes. area. Oh, yeah. we, we don't have too much trouble with that. And, um, the biggest thing is them emptying the containers that are right. That's the big problem we had. This DFW has to get forgotten about. It's a Sunday evening. By the time I'm squirreling in there at 525, it's pretty full. Yes, Sunday was that she was waiting. For the truck to get there and change out because it was full. But without additional resources, and he talked about how much they were struggling with the resources to do polls like that, he opened another day a week, exacerbating that problem. So it's just, it's I'm optimistic that things are looking better. People are coming back to work. Should we talk capital? Sure, we should. We'll include it in the packet this evening as a list of capital requests from various departments. The funding sources for this capital expenditure is also included. From utilities fund, we would want to use $45,000 for utility truck replacement. From the proffers, we would use a total of 200,000 towards VIPSA convenience site, library design, and recreation park expansion. The capital funds rolling forward from FY22 include 1,020,190. These funds will pay for Motorola radio replacements, assisted broadband project costs, Brush truck from Fire and EMS for Kingland County, not purchased in FY22, and assist the water project costs. The CIP infrastructure funds that are on hold will also roll forward for the amount of 275000 to assist with the broadband project. ARPA funds in the amount of $2 million would assist with the broadband project. We would pro procure a utility bond for the water project. And then 1674043 from the unassigned fund balance would be utilized for courthouse security system, emergency backup batteries at the courthouse, key card locks at admin building, EV car charging station at the courthouse, farmer's market, King William County fire turnout here, West Point and Mangohick Volunteer Fire and Rescue Capital, King William County Rescue Life Packs and Lucas Devices, King William County Fire and Rescue SCBA, the Ballpark Ball Field Improvements, Riverfront Development, Vehicle Purchases, Information Technology, HVAC and Roofing Projects, McAllister and Juvenile Building Repairs, and the generator at the Richmond, uh, the regional animal shelter. Did you have an EV charge? It is. It's in there for sixteen thousand dollars. I thought we were going to uh, push that off. So. I just don't know. Most of the, unless you've got the high end unit, and that's not it at sixteen thousand. I've got it's going to charge your car completely up. But this, 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 this was a request from uh, an assistant judge. Is that no is that right? from a judge? From a judge, yeah. And it would be sole access for him. Correct. 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 Okay. Is that the way? I guess. Know? I guess. In, I don't know anybody else that has an electric vehicle, but whoever would pull up and plug into it would be the ones that you utilize them now. Uh, I just don't know if the the, that, the price of that one would really charge up a vehicle in, in six or eight hours. Uh, a lot of them take all night for those. That's like a home unit, I think. So that would be a perk. 
I'm not going to say that. <laughs> uh, and down the road, we probably are, are going to have to offer some of that uh, if they really continue to go to electric vehicles. I'm skeptical on that. I think hybrid's a little bit more realistic, but that's my opinion. Where did we get the sixteen thousand dollar number from? Our facilities coordinator put it out there, and she she reached out to me and helped and worked with them, and also an electrician, page electrician, I believe, and came up with what the cost would be. Did they look at which their power was? Yes, they they did okay. the size Was it required to do it? Yeah, yeah. At least the home ones I know about. Oh. So if I go to Lowe's and buy a really nice extension cord, that wouldn't suffice. It won't charge it up. And How long does it take to charge traditionally in one of these? Uh, it depends on the agents. It depends on the watt. And the it's not, it's not charge, really like pulling into a gas station. No, I mean, can you have five minutes? My dad just bought one. Um, and they can, his can get, um, can go from 25 to 75 on a, on one of the Tesla fast chargers in like two hours. Um, so, you know, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're going on a trip in an electric vehicle, you have to plan your uh, stuff, your, your route. Well, you got to drink. And be prepared to stuff on the minimum. <laughs> pretty two pretty hours much hours. like you used to be with these. Yeah. <laughs> At one time, you had two with that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so can we get a little more information? Just judge how far does she travel? Uh, is it possible that she may be reassigned somewhere else one day? I don't know how that works. But she, uh, she will probably be here, here. Sure, correct me, six years is their assignment, correct? Generally, when they're voted in. I think that sounds right. And uh, she's assigned to the JDR court. She is the JDR judge. And I don't know where, whether it's James City County, but somewhere in Williamsburg, she lives. The uh, brush fire truck mm -hmm. is that realistic? Be able to purchase one for thirty thousand? We're going to apply for a grant for that okay. too. One thing that was going back and forth this morning: radios, motor roll radios. I know they have us by uh, certain body parts, but. What can be done? Do we have you looked at alternates and you you quoted 1500 per radio per year? 1700 actually per radio that is what we pay right now for annual service on each radio. Yes. When you put in the handover contract and then Motorola, it, it is $1,700 a radio. Has anyone ever looked into that a little bit? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know you have. Well, according to the uh, split levy bill, we are required to supply radio service for fire and EMS, not, not the sheriff's department. Correct? Is, is that um, that's that according is? to the dispatch agreement that we have with the town of West Point? Yeah. No, that, that uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that that is part of it. yeah, that is part of it. You're yes. not required to to provide it to the West Point Police Department or the, the volunteer fire department. Yeah, that's, that's how it's worded. Any volunteer organization within our county, we, we supply that, yes. But according to something in this book, we were supplying town of West Point and police force with radio. No. It's in here. Yes, it is. Yes, we, we yes, paid we our are. service agreement. And we're also paying a fee for. I thought uh, that's for the service. Aren't they paying for their own radio share? That was my understanding that they were paying for their yeah. If they're replacing, yes. They're, if they're replacing the equipment, they would pay for it, but we pay for the annual service agreement on it with no well, we, rolling and over. We're no, also I, paying the service. $1,700 is not. We're paying for the service use. for the service. service. We're paying the service for the police department, too. Correct. Every radio that is in, yes, why should on that, the system. Why wouldn't that be a town responsibility? I agree. That's the way it's always been. I know that's gone. I think we need to no, in this one, I would say anybody's ever asked a question. I think we need to. <laughs> well, it's for years they were on uh, one band, 
and that it didn't work. So, I mean, it, this system, how old is it now, sir? Um, I, I don't recall right off the top of my head, maybe. Something around 2014, maybe. Yeah. That, you have it broken down. I don't know what page it's on now, but the cost, what we were paying for there, uh, police department was 50 some thousand, wasn't it? 54,000. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, are you, you're not talking radio, you're talking service, right? Service yeah. per radio. So that's what we per do. Is radio, we have an it's not the radio itself. No, it's service it's by the radio. radio. Yeah. Yeah. Motorola and Hanover have provided us the listing a couple years back where they gave us who has what radios when we started this project for Motorola. Page seven of PACTA, section two, 54447, town Yeah. That's in section two. Why are EMS is fun? I have no problem with that. It's just odd that we're paying for the town's universal service. Well, it's probably fifty thousand is cheaper than the sheriff had to cover. We're, it's also a, a charge in there for the town itself, isn't it? Correct. Um, the, the town office has town West Point admin has six radios, and that cost that you know the seventeen out seventeen oh one forty six is what per radio. Um, that equals ten thousand two hundred eight. Yeah, I, I just don't get that. Mr. Ashcraft, I would request that this be, uh, you're going to meet with Mr. Edwards tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If you could bring it up, please. You said that was in section two? The section tab two, and it's that page seven. Yeah, that's further yeah. Need to look at that for sure. But overall, if there's any way to look at alternate contracts or we're we're anticipating the handover costs to come down this year. Or we're also anticipating motor roll to go up. System. Is that something we can throw out to maybe NACO and throw it out there and see what other states are using? Or is it based on the, it's not based on the Motorola network. They're using a state, local, regional network powers. Right. So we pay 130. Thousand to Motorola for the annual service, and because we have to utilize Hanover for our system, we pay three hundred and sixty-two thousand six hundred forty-two. So that's the biggest chunk of it is Hanover. So as soon as we can go live with our new project, Hanover is willing to negotiate that amount, and but we will not know until that tower, the, the new towers are. But it's not totally separate when when you say that. You're not, no, we're not no. going to be completely separate. Because from that's very no. expensive. We still will have to utilize them. So this was all federally mandated stuff that happened um, in the early 2010s. Everybody that was on low band UHF frequencies Feds reclaimed all that, wanted us all, wanted us on the 700, 800 megahertz spectrum. So that's where we had to get. And so we looked at two different things at the time because there were two different options available to us. And that was it. It was Hanover and it was the radio system jointly with King and Queen. Um, Hanover uses Motorola for theirs. King and Queen uses Tate. They're so in order to switch at this point, if you want to switch, if you determine that there are more favorable terms, now we determined at the time, and it was borne out in just raw numbers, that the handover system was more favorable for us financially. I think we have since grown their system. They brought on more subscribers. I mean, they brought on Essex, they brought on Middlesex. I think it was somebody else, but I can't remember who, but I think at least those two localities. Could be that those numbers are slightly flipped. At this point in time now, you would have to get all new radios. You'd have to get all new, I think, all new, Systems that dispatch um, 
would have to go in. So you would have to gut all of that yeah, and get all the new equipment. Ones, I'm sure. I'm, I, I don't know. At that, I, I'm not a network engineer. Like, like I said, at that I don't know. But I do know that it would be, it wouldn't be just as easy as saying, I'm not using you anymore, I'm using you. It wouldn't be like going from Sprint to Timo. It would be much more involved. And still, to the best of my knowledge, our only options are Hanover and Kingston. And Hanover was make, had a lot more coverage up on the upper end, correct? This would help. That's right. right. And we are heavily invested in the Hanover system right. right now. We're in the middle of putting towers online with the Motorola system. Right. We, we are heavily invested. So one way or another, it was going to be expensive and remain expensive. Um, you know, we knew that it was going to cost several hundred thousand dollars a year every year. It was going to cost that much no matter what. And at the time, Hanover A had a better offer because they were a more robust and established system. Um, and B, they offered the, the base with the back of the Motorola, which is pr pretty much the most trusted name in, in, in the industry. So, um, you know, those were the two biggest reasons that we ultimately decided to go with Hanover. Um, but again, uh, this this isn't one of those contracts that you can just flip on and off or just switch from one who, to another. This is a big subject matter. Sorry. Oh, I'm asking who is the county subject matter expert for? I think I'm sorry, my body was on my microphone. Our subject matter expert for the, our radio system. Well, the your captain was the uh well, we've been involved with this from the very beginning. Initially, there were there were consultants hired by the county who were on that interest. None of us are experts in the radio system, but we we know where we are and where we've been. Initially, there were two there were two choices we had, and Travis hit on was the Harris system, which King Queen went through, or the Motorola system, which Hanover. King Queen County at that time said we can't afford for us to do our own standalone system. So therefore, we had to join one or the other. There were negotiations with both counties, but for whatever reason, negotiation King Queen stopped. The one in Hanover continued, and that's where we are today. Uh, and there was a phase into getting the system up. First phase to get us up and operational using entirely Hanover's towers. We didn't have any towers in here at all. And then we put a tower at the courthouse here so that we have uh, a transmitter tower here. And then this phase we're in now is to put towers to at the county so that we would have better reception for fire rescue uh, and, and law enforcement throughout the entire county. So that's where we are now. I'm not advocating changing anything. I just I, I just want to look at what options are out there. And if we don't have what I call the subject matter expert, we're at the mercy of the contractor, the vendor, and they're going to tell us what they want to tell us. And I've worked with Motorola. A previous life, and they are the best, they are the most expensive. So, this would like to look at options not today, not next month, but down the road to look at what can we do with anything. That's all. Many localities must determine investing in a, in a sizable project like this. You know, they do hire a consultant to uh, assist you uh, along the way, but it is they are expensive. But they become your, they become your ally. Trying to become your voice. And, uh, I think what Travis said, you just can't say, okay, today I want to switch, and I know you didn't mean today. Yeah, no. uh, right, it, it's right. a whole well, lot of stuff I, involved. I gave you guys a schedule that uh, May is the foliage test, and then they're hoping to be up and running in uh, late June or early July with the new system. Any other questions from the public? I don't think, I don't know where this one is at, but you were talking about Bay Aging earlier, correct? And not Bay Transit. What happened with that part? Uh, I believe Bay Aging is level under. No, but uh, Bay Transit is the one I'm really, because remember they wanted to increase all, I, and my understanding is King Queen is not going to increase. Yeah, they did a 3% increase. 
due to the rise in cost of the transportation, yes, for Bay Transit, Bay Aging, that's why they find it, yeah. Okay. And again, we're, uh, what does that affect us when one of them that's in the group does not contribute? Yeah. As I understand it, everybody has their own rent. Um, and that there's essentially three routes. There's the King Queen route, there's the King William route that includes the town of West Point, and then there is the town of West Point like loop that yeah. they run. Um, and so King and Queen and not granting an increase would affect their own route. But wouldn't affect us. I don't know the way that I've ever always understood it, they would not affect ours. Even our connection to lost. You know, they they do. You know, I think you got to pay extra for that, but they can go all the way to loss. Right. Well, the re I saw a new announcement from the, the reinstituting fares, I think, soon. Yes. Yeah, I saw that. I saw it. All right. It sounds like it won't be. That was I, don't, I, don't think, I don't know about that route, but I know that the, in, the, the inside King William route is. But as, we, as we try to lean on them to, to produce more efficiencies in the routing and the dispatching, we just learned so many changes. And, and we've all seen big old bus with one passenger, or maybe even no passengers. That's what passenger usually done level 20. I'm surprised we gave them $820. This is the first year we've ever given them money. Right. I mean, I remember when we first got them, their, their funding was $26,000, and now it's $28,298. We did, years later. Didn't we try to win the war? Yeah. I think we did. Yeah. And then remember, we got service went to Shaft. Yeah. Right. We had a bunch of people who depended on that. I think we did a budget and then it restored it. <laughs> yeah. It, it was not a good decision at that time. Yeah. Next year, when I send out the narratives, I think that's a great question for me to include because they have to, they have a set of questions that they have to respond to us, the outside agency. But that's why I think is a good question. How it will affect if, if the county is unable right. to meet you the funding request. And that way, too, I have that information from any of them because you're right. That's a good question. And like while said, we're on this multi jurisdictional, the, the animal shelter. Now, we are, are we, do we have funding going into that project? The, the shelter for the uh, for the isolation. No, for the uh, what was it? Uh, new one? No, 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 no. we cut that. Cut that. Okay. Because that was the new position that she asked for, and we asked if she could run that program without the new position. Okay. And she said no. And then when King Queen basically said that they're not going to That's fund the new position, that's what I was interested in. We they weren't doing. It. You know, the great concept was just not the right time. Anything else you got? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of this stuff was based on the recommended things. What if we, like I said, there's a lot of wish lists on here. If we took some of these things off, would that help us any? Like it, it, it most, it, it's not going to help our general fund. Mm -hmm. What about the stuff about the gas? If we needed that down the road. Well, and that is, if you wanted to talk about that, what we could do, because we're trying to use the unassigned fund balance for one time expenditures type things. So if that's if that's a thought that we would reduce some of these expenses in capital and then talk about maybe using unassigned for right. the fuel. Right. That's increase. what I'm thinking. In the past, yeah. we haven't done anything. And now we've got this grandiose scheme. We've got all this money. And like I said, the people are still hurting. Like the lady said, Karina said, the people. Everybody's hurting. We're giving two hundred and fifty thousand for a farmers market. We're giving a hundred thousand for a river fund to build the plants. All this stuff, and it's nice, but I just don't think we need to put all this, that money into this now. But like I said, we haven't passed anything yet. We haven't gone by line by line. I don't think we're going to do it this year. But well, right, talking about cutting anything. You can, if your question is reducing the rate, then then nothing on here is going to reduce the rate. Right now, whether or not you think it's worthwhile to include in the capital projects is another is another matter. But um, if we're looking for rate, rate reduction, not the fund. I know that. So that would give us more in the unassigned fund balance, which would be bringing up even more than 24%, which is too much in my opinion anyway. But there's nothing else we can do about that either. And like I said, can't do that. Not given the tax reduction. Right. Yeah, so. Well, actually, we could. We talked about that one year. We can, but we, we never do. It's not a good idea. No, it's not a good idea. Yeah. But you can. <laughs> 
I'll ask again another year. What does the Bend Peninsula Airport do for King Island? I know we're yeah. obligated yeah. to spend Maybe thirty thousand a year. But yeah, we can't get out of it. That's the problem. Never seen. Yes, you can. We can. Is it, is it, we we discussed right. this last budget yeah. session. Yeah. Yeah. This is a long-term agreement. So Somewhere it's just year by year. Yeah. So, it's a long-term agreement from the beginning. We're obligated to pay that. We don't. We have legal. We have to pay the whole amount back. Well, we've we got to pay our portion of the debt. Right. And it should be somewhere. No, no, it's about three to four hundred thousand. Our portion, yeah. Oh, we went through this last yeah, that's time. That's why we uh, came and we through. asked that question yeah. when they came back. They said, Yeah, we can get out of it. We pay that money, yeah. Right. Well, there's a page in here somewhere with long term debt. Where we won't, I'll kind of let it like we missed yeah. it out. Sure. Well, that's in the yeah, that's in the budget workbook. Yeah, that's safe. Wow. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It show it's probably not going to be in our debt. Yeah, no, it wouldn't show in our debt. Oh. No. So basically, every year, the $30,000 pays off a portion of that debt. Right. Or is it directly related to $30,000? Pays off $30,000 of the debt. Or is it just a percentage know. of the $30,000? That's a good question. Is there a certain year where it goes away? Is it for? 20 years is this is yeah, the first time I'm here about oh, this. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> I don't Do you know. Travis? I, don't, I, I think it's a buyout. You, buy you gotta buy your way out. No matter when. Yeah. No, I think okay. and the thirty thousand we're paying is operational to keep it going. So we're not paying any of the debt. I don't think so, but she can ask. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe we can look into it. I've been with Best Travis and I wanted to get out of that too. So. I don't, I don't know. Nah, really. I don't remember everybody yeah, but um, <laughs> but I mean, this was a conversation we were having 10 years ago. We right. were trying to find you know, 10 dollars to cut from the phone line, and we're still in the regional airport. So, <laughs> I want to say that they um actually have a new person manager over there, also. So, it might be a good time to just kind of touch base. Yeah, on sure. the yeah. Yeah. We, we have a plan over, uh, we just have oh, okay, okay. But it's, it's really a board decision to actually do anything. To get out, yeah, because they said if all of us agreed, and all of us, not just King William, but all the people that were involved, now, it, it does house um, one of the helicopters. Yeah. I don't know which one now that we've delineated, but there's several of them. Yeah, um, I thought it was Med Flight, but I don't know now after he named another one. But... Um, and, and there's a decent amount of traffic that comes in and out of that. Now, who that's supporting or who that's going to, is that recreational? Is that supporting the mill? I know that when the um, the veneer plant was operational, that they flew in on a lot of, a lot of business out of there. I don't know uh, how much of that is commercial now. Does um, Marina use the mill? We should be able to get uh, records from the airport manager who's using it. That's state record. Last time I talked to Mr. Edwards, he told me that. Uh, the mill isn't using it nearly to the extent that it used to, and that has lessened some traffic because of that. Well, I mean, that mill used to be the global headquarters of a you know paper corporation, and now it's a mill. <laughs> so. Yes, we added one last item for contribution to the volunteer fire and EMS department to give a little bit more insight on what we've presented over the last couple of weeks. Um, we've talked briefly about the radios. Um, so Magnahit, uh, the county supports them 49,342 for their radios. Their capital, we give them 30,000. Their LODA is 3,480. Uh, their operations, 94,977. Then Walkerton, we, we support for radios, 25,522. Zero for capital, zero for LODA, and then 39,320 for their operation. West Point, we supply radios. 74,864. They have requested 50,000 for capital in FY23. Their LODA is 13,224. 
and operation 327, 327, 800. So what's the total amount for West Point? West Point total is 465,888. Okay. Is that something we do? Is it something we have to do? Yes, we do have to. That's state mandate, VRS. We have to we have to do that. It was an unfunded mandate. Unfunded. Yeah. Good point. They're good at that. <laughs> That's going out there again. They they I believe they picked up a portion in the early early couple of years and then became 100% for a little college after that. Yeah, we based the, the number um, on the number of volunteers or part-time employees, um, the roster that is submitted by each chief, yeah. and that's where we come up with the cost. Is it based on the what, what qualified workers based on full-time, part-time, just to be a member of the organization? Do you get more of a we get the, the the roster from each chief, and they they know what their their uh, that list is for, and we go strictly by that list, and that's where we get the numbers from. We don't question. Is that for volunteers only? No, part time too. So West Point has some part time employees, -time. so we do cover their moda. Yeah. What about full time? They do not have full time uh, West Point volunteer. No, but I mean it. Would we pay Loda if they yes. were full time? Yes, oh, we yes. do. Right. We, have, yeah. we have Loda on the sheriff's office and fire mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? What does that, that do? Where, where does it fund, I guess? What protection does it give the fire department? It's the line of duty. That's as much as I know. It's the death, injury. It's a lot of death benefit, death benefit. Okay, that's what I was getting at. And they've been very flexible in recent years in uh, their definition of a lot of duty. If you're, uh, if you're a member, an officer, uh, you're likely to get the benefit, or the spouse is likely to get the benefit. Is that something you get through the state? Look up. We do it through VRS, yes. VRS. Mm -hmm. It's all one big contract. We can't negotiate like we do with our no, other yeah. part yeah. <laughs> And yeah, and the reason why we pay West Point's part-time loda is because they they're nonprofit. They don't deal with VRS. So that's why that happens. All right, I think. Thank you. That's the end. Thank you. Where she says no. <laughs> no. I think that's enough to put on the right now. We are scheduled to do the publication of public hearing notice um, this Wednesday, March 23rd. So we will have that published in the newspaper. Oh, we have to come back on the motion. Left myself here. <laughs> Mr. Ashcraft, I'll give you an opportunity to, before we jump in. If you have anything for us, right? No, Mr. Chairman, yeah. uh, as a finance director, I'm a banker for, for, for hard work. Um, we're going to have a public hearing that's going to be advertised based, primarily based on the recommendations that the county administration made on the budget. Um, but you certainly have the opportunity to amend after that if there's some strong feelings. The personal property issue could certainly be one that you may want to consider later. Um, we will have it on your on your agenda for consideration on March the, the 28th. But uh, again, you, we don't want to take it that far, but you have until June 30th to, to adopt this budget uh, per state law. Um, so, I don't, 
wouldn't have a okay, you'd be in a hurry. But at the same time, uh, if you're pretty certain as to which way you want to go, then uh, it's always good to get the document behind us and then we'll start planning for next. I try to remain optimistic that things are going to settle down soon. But we never know. Okay, moving into uh, supervisor's request, Mr. Greenwood. Thank you, Russ. I said, I just think we need to go over like somebody said they wanted to go on the review line by line, but I know we don't want to do that anymore. Like I said, everybody's just sort of assuming that everything's going through as issued. I'm not happy with it. Um, other people I know aren't either. So we just keep waiting, pushing it down the road. Like, but <laughs> well, we, this booklet gives you that opportunity to go line by line. Uh -huh. and I was I was assuming that if you had something to highlight, then we could bring it up and discuss it tonight. Well, that's what it was, wasn't on here, so that's what I would like to have done too, but it doesn't seem like it happens. So I want more cuts. I don't think we should be having a 34, 31 percent unassigned fund balance and be using the money to bring it down to just 24 percent. That's still way too high. I don't think we should be putting all this money for these capital improvements in the budget. I don't think we should be doing any staff increases, or I think they should, the school should get the teacher increases, the staff should be equalized with the sheriff's department. Some of those major things need to be on it, but some of these other items need to be level funded. I don't think we should get anything extra. People are having like the professional revenue set, people are having a hard time. Everybody on this board seems like that everybody's hunky dory and everybody's living in wealth now. I mean, I'm just barely making it. Sounds like a lot of the rest of the King William citizens are too. So I don't know why all of a sudden this first budget, we're all of a sudden giving everybody what they want and all this capital improvement stuff. And then Travis saying that you don't want to go back to the day where we were at this taking a few more cuts is not taking us back to the day where we're using creditors to pay payroll. This is nowhere near it. We have 31% in the unassigned fund that's we're giving the schools all they want plus an extra two hundred thousand dollars but in their savings account. I don't think we should be doing that either. This is one of the first years we've ever given the schools a budget without questioning. So I think they should cut another half a cent. I think we should take another half a cent off the real estate, but that's just my opinion. So that's what I wanted. That's what this is our fourth budget work session. I brought this up every time. The administrator knows this. Well, if y'all want to come, I thought this was just a request, but I've been on record probably for the last three weeks saying originally that was one of our options, not not for the to hire the new positions. And also the extra two hundred thousand dollar funding to the schools. And I said it at the last meeting in, in the request that. With what's going on in the world today, and even prior to that, inflation rate was at 7.8%. And who knows what it is now? And, it's, and it is. Kareem, Ms. Monkhausen was, was dead on with it. People are suffering. And, and, you know, and they are looking at the fact that we are adding five new positions. And we found a way to make it prior to it. You know, this point in time without. So anyway, that's that's my comments. I know that I spoke out of turn, but I've been on record for several weeks with this. What's your recommendation? You feel the budget work session? My recommendation was basically I don't think it's enough support here not to uh, fund the new positions. And to not give the schools two hundred thousand dollars more, they've got seven hundred thousand dollars in their reserve fund right now, and everybody's struggling, including the parents of those children. I don't think it's a big ask, but you know that's just me. You know, I'm entitled. Everybody's entitled to their thing. I don't think when asked if we took another half cent off the school budget, they'd still be able to meet their budget, and then we'd still be giving money into the up their fund balance. It wouldn't be two hundred thousand; that still would be around fifty thousand. So I think it should be cut even more so that there's none going in the budget. But I'm not wanting to cut the salaries. 
all the salaries that are bad uptown. But I just don't think people should, we should be deciding taking people's tax dollars and putting it in a savings account. And that's not savings. I just sound fun balance for a rainy day. It's like people need their own money. I agree, maybe we should look at the personal property tax. I didn't want to take it off personal property tax because that affects the school system. But then nobody wants to produce the other part, real estate, because then that, like you have said, it will maybe mess it up, mess us up in the future because we may not have enough to cover things then. So. How many positions that were requested? I know IT had one that we were not. Were there other positions? There's only one position request that we were not to build one. one. Right. I think it was the only one. I see. Yeah. It's it's a bill on bill on uh, part, uh, parks recommendation is five. Yeah. Parks are extra And take the Animal shelter. Uh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Animal shelter. Did not have to do that program. Yeah, there's three, three positions that we elected to not fund. Yeah. So. Discuss. There's not a person in this room that hasn't heard me give a speech about it, and I'm not going to get back to this. Um, you know, there, there's uh, there's certain areas of things that have been brought up tonight that I'm willing to compromise on, some that uh, I think would be uh, ill advised. So uh, I don't think we need another budget work session by any stretch, Mr. Chairman, but I think we need to actually put ideas on the table and discuss them. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly I think tonight we, we may. Good progress on the personal property issue. Um, it got some clear guidance and I think consensus on what we want to do with that. And I don't think there's any disagreement on the fact that we want to provide um, relief from additional increases on the personal property tax relief side. And we just need to identify and execute the most appropriate mechanism to do that. Um, we can certainly discuss some capital um, you know, expenses and whether or not we want to include those now or, or we think that it would be better for another time. Um, you know, with some of these positions that we've got in here, um, you know, <laughs> I don't know that we alleviate anyone's suffering by forcing suffering on stretch departments. Um, but um, that again, um, that's just me being consistent. Um, whether or not there's room to take uh, another penny off of schools, I think might be a worthwhile discussion. We just need to look at what those numbers actually mean and how, how close we're flying them to, um, you know, territory that we don't necessarily want them in if we do that. Um, but I'm just not sure, as, you know, especially, you know, we're creating a new department with HR and, um, you know, creating a, a, a department of one with the size of an organization that we have and expect them to manage our entire HR load would be, um, I don't think wise, just what I know about HR management, you know, I think the sheriff is, is trying to demonstrate without being um, hyperbolic that, that there's a real need in dispatch here, and especially with the growth that we are continuing to see that that situation is, is already one that is tenuous and one that is going to continue to get worse if we don't do something to address it. Um, so, you know, I, I, I certainly have sympathy for the idea that we need to certainly be conservative when we're looking at these new positions, and I, and I think we have been. We've identified just now positions that we've not chosen. Uh, you know, it, we, we've got a unique opportunity here to, I think, make progress on some things. And certainly, you know, we don't want to have a legacy of having gone overboard with it. And I don't know that this budget is doing that by any stretch. You know, we're, we're reducing the rate when, again, I don't think a lot of other counties are going to be in that position this year. We're coming into a reassessment year where, where that rate's only going to get, get lower to reflect an inaccurate assessment of the, the property values that we have. So I, I think with, with the ability to, um, you know, not just compromise, but actually find a consensus common ground on the personal property tax issue uh, and, and then, you know, have a budget that we're already doing reductions in. I think it's a good, a good position to start from. But certainly any of the discussions we would want to have, I'd, I'd love to see what people's ideas are for, for you know, those concrete reductions and, and talk about them. And so you've laid out a couple of positions, um, you know, especially with the idea of, you know, taking more off the school fund or the idea of the no new positions. I can get somewhere with it, somewhere with you on one. I don't know if I can get somewhere with you on the other, but we can talk.
So we recommend we put a slot in that's the women's agenda to bring people's ideas, bring concrete support. For people. Well, and let's get some background information out there in the meantime. You know, we know we want to sit, what's a, what's a penny getting us right now? That's in here. We can do the math ourselves, but let's just let's make sure A the schools know we're having this discussion. Three hundred thousand. Mr. Chair, for Hank, what are we speaking of with uh, concrete support? Just instead of just if you if you can develop an argument on paper and bring it with you or send it, we can oh, argue, they they argue that's that's there. Yeah, I mean, we can't come up with that. We don't have the numbers. The staff so, needs to come up with the numbers. The argument <laughs> is is five new positions and the economy being the way that it is. I mean. There's no need in the meeting to argue about that. I mean, you know, it's just, that's just my opinion. We already know what I said, all the argument I need to do. That Mr. Eshka said that you know, still be completely cover the school budget and still leave them with over $50,000 in excess. So I think it needs to be more than that, but I'm willing to compromise with giving them their full budget and $50,000. But if we want to look at what the whole penny will do, like which is three hundred thousand dollars, then maybe they just they have to. Is that correct? Three hundred thousand. I thought it was less than that. For, Especially for when you school. If, we, tax if, you, if, if, if you didn't touch the school, they would have had five hundred thousand. They would have had five hundred thousand, and we took a pen, We took a, we took one cent off for the school, so that reduced it to two hundred thousand. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I'm good with uh, doing the personal yeah. property. I think it, it's something we, as much as we can do. I just, and I, I'll be honest with you, I, I've had folks approach me and not one for the first district. But they said, giving me a penny don't mean nothing. To me. You you get five cents or more, then I'll listen to you. But a penny ain't doing a thing for me. Thirty-one, thirty-six dollars a year. I mean, three dollars a month. It's not helping, you know. And, and that came from folks in the other district. But uh, you know, I mean, we can cut positions and everything. Uh, I think when you are financially able to to have them, and we and there's obviously a need to have them. You know, as many years we couldn't do. And I remember looking at how tight it was and we couldn't do any interest. Um, as in the school, I, I don't know what they plan. Uh, I wouldn't think they'd spend 200000 on gas, but did they include increases for fuel? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, they could easily eat up that 50000 that you got left over right there on the buses, I'm sure. That's just this year's thing. He said they have yeah. $700,000 sitting there already. Well, there's, yeah. there's a plan to use that. For the yeah, that's another thing. Like we should be planning to use the money because we collected too much to begin with. We shouldn't have collected that right. much. So they have seven hundred. dollars it, it does make it tougher. I can collect it to, to, you know, uh, to liquidate it back to the public yeah. to where it means something. Like, like I said, the only thing I can say is what I said. A penny. That doesn't, doesn't help them at all. It doesn't help them, but it does yeah. mean something. None of my constituents have come up to me and said, Oh, well, Mr. Greenwood, I'm okay with you spending every money, every dollar you've gotten. They no, never said that. Do that. They they I'm just saying what that means right. to the public. Everybody yeah. 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 they, they look at what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're struggling, Regardless of whether a penny means anything or not, right. if they're struggling, on, they would want to know if Washington, D.C. Is, is telling everybody that we have to be in this together, like the book. And then, that's true. And then, they we are, we have it's to start by moving forward. That doesn't have a good look. If we're all in this together, right? We, we, we found a way to do, to do this job. I'm not saying this for you. I'm just saying this is a wrong thing. They are getting a lot of stuff, not cutting much. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out when in this last 
recession, non-recession, recessionary cycle, local government gets to stop bearing the brunt. And everyone else is, you know, largesse, but, uh, you know, we want an extra dispatcher and we're empire building. Okay. I don't have anything to add. I think it's all been expressed. We're going to come back to maybe with some uh, exercises done for us with different values and some of the game types are. Want a chance to tell them. Is there anything? I think probably I haven't looked at it yet, but I think it's a pretty full agenda. Mm -hmm. That you could consider anything that we can pull out to not go on to 11 o'clock. We'll look at it. Was there anything else other related that you wanted to take up that night besides the personal property? I mean, we can do it later. The advertisement will already be. Sorry, oh, he died. So we'll be advertising, as I said, the, rec the recommended uh, budget. But we can start uh, adjusting it at any time. Sounds like the position is some the three of you that support not leaving the positions in, the positions would be out. That's not the wrong. Like right. That. So if we're if we're just polling so that we know what we need to have in the document, yeah. I would support as the discussion goes forward. My position would be I would like to leave the positions in. I would be open to discussing what an additional penny on the school would look like. I can agree with that. Okay, okay gentlemen, if I can get a motion to go into closed session. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we go into closed session in accordance with section 2.2-3711A7 of the Code of Virginia. I move the Board of Supervisors convening closed meeting to Consult with legal counsel, consultants, and or staff on a matter of probable litigation in which the county may be involved. Because discussion in open meeting may adversely affect the litigation position or negotiating strategy of the board. Motion made, motion second. Second. Mr. Garber? Aye. Mr. Muskowski? Aye. Mr. Greenwood? Aye. Mr. Hodges? Aye. Mr. Chairman Moore? Aye. Mr. Chair, I move we reconvene in open session. Mr. Muskowski, Mr. Greenwood, Mr. Hodges, Mr. Carver, Chairman Moore. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve SR1. Second. Mr. Greenwood, Mr. Hodges, Mr. Carver, Mr. Muskowski, Chairman Moore. Chairman, motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Because I know somebody's going to tell them. Okay. Now, next. Oh, yeah, I'll give it. Chairman, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Mr. Hodges. Aye. Mr. Garber. Aye. Mr. Muskowski. Aye. Mr. Greenwood. Aye. Chairman Moore. Aye. Thank you, everyone.